Hello everybody and welcome back uh, to my channel. Over the uh, last few weeks I've had a request from people um, asking if I'd do a, a video on developing film. Now to people who've used film for a long time this becomes second nature and, and to, to, to us it's a simple process but people who have never tried it it can be a little daunting. So in this video I'm going to show you how I develop uh, my films. Uh, I'm going to take a picture as well today with my 4x5 camera and because uh, I need something to develop so I thought I'd use that with just one sheet but the development process is exactly the same if you're using uh, 120 roll film or 35mm. For developing the 4x5 sheet film I'll be using this. This is the Stamen Press SP445 development tank. This holds uh, four sheets of 4x5 film in these holders. Now, as I say, if you're going to do roll film, then you would use a tank like this. This is a, a Patterson. It's a, what's called a two-reel tank. Two, you can do two 35mm films in this, or one, one roll of 120 film. But the tanks do come in different sizes, so you can put more reels into the tank. Um, and with this, you'd simply, if that's 35mm, that's the size of the opening for putting the 35mm film on. If you're using 120, you'd just simply open this up and then just adjust it to the size for, say, 120 roll film. And then that will go in the tank. And as I keep saying, the development is exactly the same process. Now, I'm going to take a picture today, as I say, with my Chamonix 4x5 camera. Uh, it's a still life. It'll give me something to develop and show you guys how it's done. I'm going to photograph this uh, old camera. It's a, uh, a Teb number 5 uh, camera. Now, I think from memory, this camera was built around about 1906. I don't use this for taking pictures because... Um, it takes glass plates which I don't use and also that you can actually put roll film in but they don't make the roll film to the size to fit this camera so I just keep this camera because I think it's a, a lovely looking camera it's a folding type camera everything folds up uh, but I just love the front of this camera the way it's made it's got a pneumatic uh, shutter release just press this force the air up and it, and it uh, closes and opens the shutter uh, so I say, it's a, it's a beautiful camera, so this is what I'm going to photograph. So what I'll do is I'll get the, the camera set up now. Um, I'll show you how I take the picture. So those that are interested in 4x5, they can see how I do that. And uh, the lighting uh, set up, I'll show you that. It's quite simple. Uh, so I'll get the camera set up now and show you uh, how, how I'm going to take this picture and then show you how I develop the film. The lighting set up is quite simple. I'm going to be using uh, my LED light and you can see I've covered it in uh, uh, tissue paper uh, just to diffuse the light and I'm bouncing it off the wall rather than directly at the subject. So I'll set my 4x5 camera up now and show you how I'm going to take this picture with the, uh, the uh, Chamonix uh, 4x5 camera. Right, set the uh, Chamonix up. When you use these cameras, make sure that when you uh, set it up, that everything is uh, is what we call neutralised, so there's no swings, no tilts on it. I'm going to use uh, this lens. It's a um, 150mm lens. And with the bellows, I can get quite uh, quite close. That's the cable release. Check that's working. That's fine. Right, position the camera. Now, I'm not going to photograph it with the roof light on. 
that I'm just going to use that to give me a little bit more light for uh, actually focusing. So I'll get me the loop and open the shutter, make sure it's wide open, lens at 5.6 and then just get down and start uh, focusing on the subject. Now the first thing I do with these cameras is move the the back Just starting to pop into focus now. I use the uh, fine focus. The camera wants to further up. They are slow to work with 45s. Whoops. Uh, getting them set up etc. Just bring it down a little bit. Just trying to make sure I've got the composition. going to have to use a little bit of movement in this uh, <coughs> to get everything what I want in focus. Just use this now, just getting it set up right, just takes time. Right now focused actually on the shutter dial on the camera there that's in focus but the the bottom part of the cam of the uh, camera is out of focus so what I need to do now is <coughs> I need a little bit of swing uh, when I say that it's the front stand I'm just going to swing it slightly that way and then use a little bit of a front tilt and for this I'm going to have to use my dark cloth now. Right now I can see it a lot better if you can hear me. carefully around the subject to make sure I've got this uh, pneumatic uh, release in, in the picture um, and I seem to have got the shutter dial in focus and the name and I want this background to go out of focus so I'm going to turn the lights off now and they'll just see how the light is affecting the uh, these shadows on the picture so turn the lights and just work on work with the LED light and straight away I can see that we've got the light reflect off nicely off the wall but at the side of the camera here um, there's no detail getting there, so I'm going to have to put something to reflect some light back into that shadow area. Here's this bit of white card. Now 
nice reflecting some light back into the camera right check under with the loop again underneath make sure that that light's reflecting nicely into this area here the shaded area right that's the view that i'm seeing through the viewfinder everything looks about right there so i now need to take a, a light reading set this off so i've got a tiny little bit of swing on the front not much and a little bit of a front tilt tilting it upwards slightly and that seems to be getting everything in focus so now to take a light reading I'm using Fuji across, I'm rating it, uh, I rate it at 80 ISO that and I just stop down actually and see set it at f16 and see where the depth of field uh, is extending to you can actually see it without the the, the dark cloth yeah, that's just giving me enough depth of field now. It's bringing some of this in focus, but the background is out of focus. I'm hoping that this is in focus, the uh, rubber shutter release um, and the, the prism viewfinder on this. So I'll take a light reading. I'm going to take an instant light reading. Pointing back to the camera. And that's giving me eight seconds at f16 it's right in the shadow area oops <laughs> i'll take that off put that back in a minute so the, the background by the look of that is going to be around round about one and a half stops so two stops darker than the front of the camera and this side is going to be a stop darker the next thing i have to do is measure the bellows because i've got bellows extension so you might see it there better now for that i use my uh, app on the phone my reciprocity uh, timer app it'll give me the compensation for the bellows so the focal length 150 millimeter bellows extension was forgotten it now this is really faffing for one picture but it's all good fun it's about 190 so it's on the nodal point of the lens to the film plane which is about 190 millimeter and that's giving me an exposure of uh, 12 seconds you can see that on there so it's 12 seconds at uh, Fuji across um, there's no reciprocity failure at 12 seconds with this film which is brilliant so I'll get the uh, dark slide that's in the camera make sure the lens is shut um, make sure I'm on time just check, check if that's working yeah that's good cut the shutter lens is closed pull the dark slide out let everything stabilise so it stops checking and then it's a 12 second exposure just uh, readjust that Here we go. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That's it. Twelve seconds exposure. F sixteen. Uh, put the dark slide back in. Black facing out. I can 
see in there. There we go. Check this film. Get this film developed now and uh, I'll show you the development process. Right before I can develop the film, I've got to get the film into uh, the development tanks and that has to be done in complete darkness. I use one of these, it's a Calumet pop-up changing tent, very compact when it's folded up. Uh, you just simply pull it and it pops up. It's better than the ones that uh, are not uh, a pop-up type because once you get your hands in there, uh, if it's not the pop-up type, the, the top of it is it hitting your hands, it just makes it more awkward. These are far superior to use. They have light uh, tight sleeves, you put your arms in there, uh, zip it up and no light can get into the actual bag itself. Now for 4x5 sheet film, uh, I'll show you how that uh, fitted into the holder. I'll open this up, this is a piece of wasted film, and pull the film out. And you can see on the top right hand side there there's a notched edge and that's to help you when you're in, in the dark loading the film into the holders uh, and then taking them out that this indicates that uh, the emulsion side is facing you and it's important to know that because when you put them in the holders you always have to make sure that it's on the top right hand side and you know that the emulsion's facing outwards also, when you take these out in the, the pop-up changing tent and put them in the SP445 that I use and fit them onto the negative holder, the emulsion has to face outwards. Uh, and again, you know because of the notched edge. If that's facing, if that's on the right hand side, you simply slip it under those little tabs and then let the film drop down, make, just go around with your fingers, make sure it's fitted in underneath all the tabs and then simply put it into the tank like that and then put the lid on once it's shut that's uh, light tight and every, everything can be carried out then in daylight. If you were using roll film or 35mm film you'd probably use a tank like this this is a, the Patterson one and it has a spiral uh, always make sure that the centre spindle is attached to the spiral that makes the tank light proof this is set for 120 roll film uh, if I shrink it down for 35mm to load 35mm film into there we simply pull a little bit of the leader out make sure it goes make sure we look at these little tabs you can feel them you do get used to all of this uh, when you're working just by feel in the dark and then just pull it through so it goes underneath those little ball bearings at either side and then pull the film out and rotate the spiral like that and as you do that it wraps it onto the spiral if you're using 120 roll film <clears throat> you do it the same way but it's a little bit more awkward um, because the film's wider and it can tend to curl but <clears throat> It's hard to explain how to do it, you just have to practice that, but it does get easier. So once you've got the, the film loaded onto the um, spiral, you bob it into the tank. I can't get it into the tank because of that, but you bob it into the tank and then put the lid on. Close it and that's light tight now and all the rest of the development process again can be uh, carried out in daylight. So that's... Uh, how to load film. Right, we'll get on to the uh, development now. Right, I'm going to mix the chemicals up now. I've got the uh, uh, tank heated up and it's up at, uh, I'll show you, 70 Fahrenheit. I think that's 21C. And that's controlled by the Nova. Uh, thermostat on the wall that's plugged in so this is another a dark room a tempering uh, tank very handy to have these uh, <coughs> it's important that you you work at a, a, a constant temperature um, and these things are brilliant now I'm going to use a, 
Pyrocat HD, one of my favourite developers. Pyrocat HD comes in two parts. I've mixed this up myself from Raw Chemicals. Uh, part A, and then we have the Part B. One thing you have to be very careful when using this is that you'd never get Part B into Part A, otherwise you will ruin the actual developer. So, I use um, these little uh, syringes for uh, measuring. Uh, one's got black tape on, and that's the one that I use in the Pyrocat A. And the other one has no tape on, and that's for the B part of the developer. So it's just so I don't get mixed up. I don't want to contaminate part A. Uh, I've got my graduate, and I'm going to pour a little bit of water into the graduate before I add the chemical. Just a small amount. Part A. So I'm mixing it one to one to 100. So it's one part to 100 uh, of water. Well, one part of a um, developer, one mil to 99 mils of water. And I'm mixing it up to 500 mils. So it's going to be five parts of this and five parts of B. See them round about five mils there, and I pour that into the water. Put the lid on that, I squeeze the container to keep the air out, makes it last longer. Then the part B, same amount, five mils. That's five mils part B. As long as you're consistent when you're developing with temperature and you're mixing, you always know where you're going with it. So if there's any problems, you can usually sort of trace it back, but you have to be consistent with it. Now I pour the water in to make up to 500 mils. Going up to about there. Touch mark. That's 500 mils. And then give it a little stir. Bob that into the tank with the warmer water and then just stick the thermometer into it. Sometimes the temperature can drop. We'll just see where that's going now. It's coming up now to 70 which is fine. Right, I'll go uh, pre-soak the film now, give it a uh, couple of minutes pre-soak and then we'll start the development process. Just before I go and uh, pre-soak the film, the development process uh, for 35mm or 120 uh, roll film is exactly the same process as what I'm doing here. The only difference is, is rather than loading into a, a 4x5 tank, you'll be loaded into a um, onto a spiral um, and this is a, a Patterson tank now that's set for uh, 120 roll film it goes underneath those bot little ball bearings you can see there and then you simply wind the film again in the dark uh, if we want to use 35 millimeter we close it up and then we load 35 millimeter into there just by turning it so the actual process is exactly the same. Pop it into the tank, put the lid on, all in the dark, 
and then once it's in the tank you can come out and develop in daylight right go pre-sort the film now now I'm going to uh, pre-sort the film at the uh, roughly the same temperature as the developer this tap is uh, thermostatically controlled so I'll set it to around about 21 turn it on let it warm up a little bit and then just fill it into the tank some people don't always pre-sort films I'm a bit old fashioned, I still like to do it, it doesn't do it any harm and you'll see the colour of the anti hylation layer that this uh, pre-wash cleans off the film as I say it's not always necessary I find with certain films if you don't pre-sort you can get what's called bromide drag and I just keep rotating it about 20 times and I just leave it to stand and uh, come back and um, pour it out right it's had enough time to pre-soak so take the lids off and you can see the colour of this now I'm pouring it out that's off the film right go back start the development process Right, the uh, temperature is set at 70, so that's ready to use. So I'm going to take the uh, thermostat out, and then pour the chemical into the tank. Now for this, you need both lids off, otherwise it won't pour properly. Pour it in. What I do tend to do is just squeeze the top. Squeeze the tank so the chemicals are. Uh, I know I can just see the develops on it covering the film, and then start the time and then just agitate slowly. I'll do this for about 20 seconds. Invert the tank, agitate it um, probably two times every minute, and I'm going to do that uh, uh, up to a finish time of nine and a half minutes. So I'll just keep behind me. Stopwatch. Coming up to the first minute. It's worth mentioning also with Pyrocat, you don't have to use a. Uh, well, you don't. You're not supposed to use a uh, stock bath, chemical stock bath. Just use water. We're talking. I don't know if give it two or three. We don't really matter. I'll do it till next time. So rather than bore you, I'll just uh, speed this part up to the end, near the end of the development and then show you the rest of the process. It's pretty simple really with this, it's just getting the temperature right, uh, mixing the chemicals up accurately. I pre-soak my film, some don't, but uh, I think with Pyrocat you, you're probably better to pre-soak it. And then uh, pouring the development into the tank uh, at a given time, um, agitate. Um, you know, sometimes I, I say I do it at uh, 20, just do this, one, two, I do it 20 seconds, the initial agitation, then two, um, two agitations every minute. Some people might uh, do it differently, it's just, you just find out what suits you, there's no real set, set in stone way of doing it. So I'll, as I say, I'll, I'll speed up the, uh, the, um, the the footage now. I don't want to bore you uh, watching this, um, and I'll see you at the end of the development process. Right, we're coming up to the last uh, full minute, nine minutes. Next stage, I'll go to the sink, back to the sink. Pour out the developer, you don't use this again, and uh, use water as the stop bath. So we'll do that now. Put 
far on the developer away. Fill the tank with water again. Make sure it's around, around about 20, 20, 100 degrees. And then just do some gentle agitations for about 30 seconds and that will stop the development. Right, pour out the water. Back in the dark room, you might call it, and then going to add just, just that way. Now I'll fix her. In funnel. Oops, funnel. This is a Elfin rapid, rapid Fixer, diluted 1 to 4. And I'll give this about 5 minutes. Bit too much. Put the lids on. And just keep agitating this now. Some people agitate throughout the process. I don't think it's necessary. I'll probably give it 30 second agitations and let it rest and then keep doing 30 second ones. When I've done this, I'll show you how I wash my films, how I've washed them for over 40 years. And they've, uh, I've got negatives that go back that long and they've never gone off. So the washing process does work. It might be that you're on a water meter and it can be expensive running a tap for 10 20 minutes and there's no real need to do that right let that sit for uh, about 20 seconds then just keep intermittently intermittently i can't say that word now just keep agitating it down again throughout the five minutes for me this is the fun of film photography I've taken that picture, I've not seen it, I've not had a, uh, an LCD preview of it. I've just had to use my knowledge with metering, um, with composition, and hopefully it'll turn out, but I won't see it until I've got this negative hung up and drying to see whether I've successfully got the exposure right and the composition. And then we've got the fun part of uh, either doing this in a dark room, or in my case, uh, I'll be scanning it. These Stearman press uh, tanks, you have to order these, uh, I think, uh, from America. But the postage, the postage is very reasonable and uh, it gets to you fairly quick. So, or it did do when I did it before we had all this uh, pandemic going on. Might be a bit slower now, but right, that's the fixer out, and we'll go uh, watch the film. I'll show you how to do that then. Right, the negative is not now sensitive uh, to light. Uh, we could actually have a look now. That's a negative. If you can see that. And uh, it has to be washed to clear all the fixer off. And this is the way to do it. Fill the tank up, clean water. Agitate it four times. One, two, three, four. Pour the water out. Right, 
fill the tank back up. This time agitate it eight times or invert the tank eight times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You're quite vigorous when you're doing this. Pour it out. Fill the tank back up. I won't take through the whole process. Fill it back up. Agitate or invert it 16 times. Pour the water out. Pour fresh water in. Agitate it, invert it 20 times. Pour the water out. And then agitate, uh, fill the tank back up. Um, agitate and invert 30 times. Pour the water out. And the film's fully washed then. And then what I do is I add just a touch of a washing aid. It stops the film uh, dry and streaky. I'll show you that when I actually do it, but uh, I'll carry on washing this. Right, so I've finished the washing cycle. Uh, I'll take the lid off now. Carefully take the negative out. Now I'm going to uh, take all the negative holders out. Fill the tank full of clean water again. Fill it full. And then I poured a little bit of this uh, washing agent into the clean water, fill it about with my fingers, then put the negative into the tank. Just uh, move it up and down like that. And let that stand for a minute. And that's the uh, stuff that I use, a uh, wetting agent. I only used a tiny little bit. Right, let that uh, soak in there and then uh, hang the negative up. After it's had a good soak in the wetting agent, I normally lift it, uh, lift the negative out and then just pour, pour the uh, rest of the water with the wetting agent in all of the negative. Right, we'll go hang this up now. Right, I'm going to hang the negative onto the holder. Now, the way I tend to do that is you just push the negative up from the corner so I can just see the top of it and then on the clip just let it clip on there make sure it's tight and then pull it off very very carefully and then we can just let that hang to dry now and see what it looks like uh, on the uh, after the scan I'll try and show you it it looks quite uh, Quite good actually. Don't know if you can see that properly. That might won't be helping. So anyway, that that's the negative. Now that'll take a, a couple of hours to dry, so I'll just let it dry naturally and then I'll say scan it and see what it looks like. So that's the development process uh, as you've seen it's quite uh, quite easy to do you've just got to be methodical and uh, everything you do uh, try and you know try and repeat that the next time you do it they'll exactly the same with the temperatures the amounts of uh, developer you're putting into the water the dilutions etc the inversions of the tanks always try and keep to a, a set method and that way if there is any problems um, you know you can you can change things slightly but if you're constantly changing things every time you develop a negative you don't know where you are so as I said just be methodical and accurate and uh, you, you should be okay it's, it's not rocket science it's quite simple really okay uh, I'll scan the negative next next and, and let you see that right this is the uh, scanned uh, negative I scanned it on an Epson V800 flatbed scanner uh, I scanned it as a linear raw scan, in other words, no adjustments were done in the scanning software. Now keep in mind I was after a lower uh, key effect, let's have a little look closer at the uh, negative and we can see that it's uh, worked out quite well. Uh, I've got um, the density just looks about right to get in this lower uh, key effect. Didn't want too many bright tones in the image. 
for the, I just wanted this front uh, standard and the bed of the camera, uh, the, uh, the the glass prism to, to really stand out in this picture. So I'll go to Colour Perfect. This is what I use to convert the negative into a positive. Now I normally do some adjustments uh, in Colour Perfect to uh, adjust the highlights and the shadows, but I won't do on this occasion because it's nearly right as it is. So if I press OK, then we'll get the conversion from a negative to a positive. And let's take a closer look. Excuse the bits, uh, dust bunnies and etc. I've got to clean this up yet. The, um, <clears throat> the shadow detail is just about right. It's just tailing off as it goes to the back. So I've got some decent uh, blacks in that and some nice intermediate dark tones. The camera movements worked uh, quite well really. I got the shutter speed dial in focus and the tab number five and the aperture scale at the bottom also in focus. We've got this side, the left hand side of the front standard. That looks to be in focus. The right hand side slightly out, but uh, it's acceptable. I've also got the prism uh, viewfinder, which I wanted uh, in focus. I've got it in focus at the front and it tails off a little bit uh, to the back, that's to do with the planar focus. And then the pneumatic uh, air release, uh, I've got that, I, I wanted that to be actually in focus. So, all in all, I haven't done bad, it's not easy using a large format camera looking through uh, the viewfinder to, to get the planes of focus correct. You'll never get everything in focus, but you've just got to go for the areas that you want in focus. Yeah, so all in all, very nice, I'm very pleased with that. Now let's look at the edited image. Now I've all I've done with this is use contrast grading to adjust the contrast. Let's have a look in at the image now as it's edited. And you can see the, de the detail from the, uh, the uh, 4x5 negative is really incredible. You can see where the plane of focus is pulling things in and out of focus. And then let's look at the image uh, framed, uh, what I call forks frame, uh, framed and mounted. And that's the, the finished picture. So all in all, uh, everything turned out quite well. I hope uh, for people who've never uh, developed film have found this helpful. Uh, you can see it's not that hard to do. And as I say, developing the 4 by 5 sheet film, uh, when you're not you're doing it in a dark room in trays, when you're doing it in tanks, it's just the same for 120 and 35 millimeter roll films. I also hope you uh, enjoyed me uh, watching me take this picture using the 4 by 5 camera. I thought I'd uh, do the whole process from a capture right to the developed negative to the finished image. I think the whole thing works better that way rather than splitting the video into two uh, separate videos. So thank you if you've watched it to the end. I know it's been a long video but that really there's no real shortcuts when you're, you're showing something like this and you want to show all the detail and all the things that it needs to get from the actual subject to the finished image. It does take time, so I thank you for your patience. So that's the end of the video. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, if you like the video, please give me a like. Better still, subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions, please leave them below. And once again, please stay safe, and I'll see you all in the next video.